So, uh, welcome back to Montague Arms. It's, it's lovely to be back here. This is the uh, famous adjusting the microphone routine, which some of you may have remembered from some of our shows previously. Call back. It's a classic. There we go. This one holds in place. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Going to move on. Now, uh, this next, uh, uh, well, we've uh, had some bad news uh, in the times of the pub closed. Sadly, uh, poet Richard Tyrone Jones suffered a uh, tragic heart attack in the meantime. Uh, but fortunately, like a Time Lord, he has regenerated for us. Um, but also, I would warn you, he's not turned into Cap Peter Capaldi in the meantime. So please welcome to the stage, uh, please put your uh, prosthetic uh, sink plungers together in a uh, Dalek style clap for our crap time lord, Richard Toro Jones! Yay! Thank you, Bob! Now, the whole point of the show tonight was going to be that it was going to be themed around sequels. No one else has bothered. Uh, but I'm going to do some stuff for a crap time lord which is actually my third solo show, but it's a follow-up yeah. to my first solo show, uh, Big Hearts, and it starts with a poem. Since I'm too polite to say I don't want a relationship, I say I've just come out of a really complicated spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> Since I don't like to say I wiped their memories and abandoned them, I say I have nice memories of all my companions. <laughs> Since I don't like to say not attending, I think maybe. Since I'm too scared to say I like you, I say, would you like a jelly baby? Uh, since I don't like to call them chances for happiness gone forever, I call them alternate realities. <laughs> since I don't like to say, I'm scared I'm dying, I say, I'm going to regenerate into a load of fucking maggots. <laughs> is this one better? No, I think it is. Cheers. Yeah, it's difficult to know what to do when I finish a poem, isn't it? Just, just weep, I think. Uh, it's, uh, yes, I'm Richard Tyron Jones. And I'm Ginger. Yay! I'm a poet. Yay! And I have chronic heart failure. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Goodbye. Don't worry. Uh, no cause for alarm, because uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm not really ginger. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this uh, is a bit of my uh, poem uh, to a new show, Crap Time Lord. You can tell it's new, because I'm just reading it off a piece of paper. Uh, because uh, just like Doctor Who, I have two hearts that unjustly cancelled BBC series and a succession of glamorous, but sadly, mostly platonic companions. But unlike Doctor Who, that's obviously due to heart failure, and also, I don't have a doctor. So, a quick recap. Uh, who's actually seen the first show? Because there we are. A few of you were still, still in the minority. Uh, so, uh, basically, when I turned 30 in 2010, I celebrated my birthday by holding my own funeral as a spoken word event, uh, and laying a coffin throughout, uh, flanked on either side by women in black holding a lot of fatherless ginger children. Uh, I, I faked my own death. Just Doctor Who. Uh, and like Doctor Who, it was completely unconvincing. Uh, but still quite fun. Uh, but unlike Doctor Who, a month later I found myself in hospital almost dead of heart failure. Um, and that is ironic. But still, I did get an award winning Wellcome Trust funded solo show out of it, a Big Heart, which uh, became a Radio 4 series. And a book available to buy at half price tonight. Uh, not £10, but uh, £5, because the cover is completely fucked. Uh, and um, so you know, I, I don't like to go on about it. Um, so uh, right, to stop me from dying again, uh, they gave me an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, which is basically a little uh, pacemaker plus underneath my collarbone there that goes down into my heart. And uh, so basically, I do have two hearts. Uh, and if the big one ever stops, uh, then the little one just kind of does this to me. Bang! Oh, and I fall to the floor with my arms like this, going, ah! Then unleash a barrage of swearing. So basically, why they gave the job to Peter Capaldi and not me, I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, maybe it's because uh, my catchphrase wasn't quite up to scratch. You know, every every doctor has got to have their own kind of catchphrase, like the David Tennant. It's allons-y, and uh, uh, with um, I, I would say, do, would you like a jelly, bit jelly baby, uh, with Tom Baker? Me, my catchphrase is bow ties are shit. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I told you it was a shit catchphrase. Right. Okay, so uh, another way. I so love you, that. That's not the worst side effect, though. Uh, let's get into the sex stuff. Uh, another way, even closer to my own heart, that uh, it, its own failure has transformed my life is by making it hard. Oh, that's completely the wrong word entirely. By making it difficult, uh, no, challenging, uh, to perform that most intimate form of exercise, uh, that which the great Roman poet Catullus called bed wrestling, and which the great Yorkshire philosopher Roy Chubby Brown called pink <laughs> conquers, <laughs> sex. In the depths of my illness, uh, sex was far from my mind, because I couldn't let any walk. Phlegm was the sole sticky liquid that I could expect to expectorate. And my glamorous female companions, uh, which is a poet you do sometimes uh, collect, uh, have nothing to fear, but we weren't exactly going on any, any adventures either. But then, I was miraculously regenerated, not due to any revolutionary exercise regimen, uh, nor act of positive thinking. I can't say that I battled my way back to health uh, in a brave way. All they did was just put me on two new drugs, uh, and suddenly, hey presto, I could walk again. Uh, so at first, when I came out of hospital, I didn't notice uh, much difference in my uh, drives. I came out of hospital and was uh, almost immediately willingly ambushed by two cougar exes, uh, leaping out of a kind of purple patch of Lady Lavender, flowering after the drought of illness. <laughs> uh, sadly, this turned out to be, be a mere oasis watered by tears of feminine pity. <laughs> God, I'm poetic, I uh, Another thing is that uh, when uh, women uh, like the look of me and like my hair and uh, want to chat me up, they always ask me, so, uh, are, are you Irish at all? To which um, I've always had to respond honestly, but disappointingly, no, I'm from Wolverhampton. Uh, but now I can say, yes, I am part Irish. Uh, would you like to feel the part of me? That is Irish, and then uh, of course I uh, just get them to feel up my uh, implantable cardioverted fibula, which later, which is indeed manufactured in Clonmel Island by Boston Scientific. So I am now about two percent Irish uh, by weight. <laughs> uh, when, when I started doing uh, heart-stopping poems about my condition live, the fact that I had this critical cardiac illness made me seem a little bit dangerous. <laughs> exotic. One girl did seem really rather interested in whether my defibrillator would go off uh, while she was dancing the one-eyed tango with uh, who I like to call Little Richard. Um, although he's, he's, not, um, he's, he's not black, obviously. Uh, but he, he's quite a boogie boogie penis. So, um, and, uh, I love that joke. And uh, she, she, anyway, she put a lot of effort into making my uh, re regeneration happen, I'm glad to say. And she did have a point, because it, it tends to go off uh, when I've had too much alcohol, uh, when I'm hot, and when I'm engaging in physical exercise. If I, if I do only one of those things, I tend to be okay. It's only when I do kind of all three of them at the same time that I enter into a kind of cardiac buckaroo! And uh, uh, all of these things are likely to be combined during the Ars Amorata. But then uh, this girl uh, was a bit strange in other ways. Whilst a teenager, she had gone around deliberately seducing all the ginger boys she could find out of a weird pity fetish. Uh, that's right, I had found that mythical figure of mercy only once whispered about at our secret ginger society meeting. Uh, the fabled Angel of Mons. <laughs> World War One joke there. Uh, I'm not saying that she was highly strong, this girl, but uh, we did split up when I pointed out that she had a bogey up her nose. Uh, but I was surprisingly not bothered about this, despite the fact that she had been so good in the sack. Well, because 
for a while, uh, the nine tablets, I'll be given ten minutes here, by the way. The uh, nine... <laughs> the, no, ten minutes to live. I mean, but, um, uh, well, the, the nine tablets a day uh, I'm on to regulate my heart rate uh, and uh, heart failure side effects uh, have left me in a transcendental state of Scargillite Zen. Uh, un unable to get too upset, joyous, or angry. But it's not just those passions, it has leveled. Uh, and while their effect on mind and body has, for me, uh, settled the question of Cartesian dualism once and for all, uh, quite frankly, after that honeymoon period of being glad that I just wasn't dead or disabled, wore off, uh, I found myself getting, well, since I don't like to say I'm frustrated, I say I'm disappointed. Since I don't like to say I'm confused, I say I'm disjointed. Since it's unpoetic to say heart failure, I say I've apoplexy. Uh, since I don't like to say I feel impotent, I say I'm asexy. <laughs> since I don't like to say I'm serially disappointing, I say I'm experienced at dating. Since I don't like to break your heart, I keep texting. Well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, and everything I say now, I'm, I'm basically going to sound like Pele. Uh, these, these medicines, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and uh, Imperinone especially, uh, do mount up in your body, make it tired, uh, make it more difficult to be anxious, more difficult to be angry, but also more difficult to have an angry hug. Uh, I've floated through deaths and breakups in my life since, uh, in complete equanimity, like a, a star whale over Milton Keynes. And this state of affairs, this lack of state of affairs, it didn't fit my Byron-esque poetic self-image. It could not continue. So I went to my uh, heart failure nurse. She was heavily pregnant. I was heavily jealous in the same way that I was jealous of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film Junior. I told her that I'm feeling a bit better. I haven't been defibrillated for quite a while. Can I please cut down on my medication? Well, she couldn't offer me any new pills, just a stark choice. I could reduce my drugs, and yes, my libido would increase, but in reverse proportion to my life expectancy. Essentially, my choice was sex or death. No, wait, that's wrong. Because that, be, that would be an easy choice, wouldn't it? Just say, sex or death? I'll have the sex, please. Uh, no, I mean, uh, the rather more Swiftian choice was uh, sex and early death, or no sex and long life, just like Doctor Who. So, uh, can I just check now, which of you would choose no sex but a long life? Put your hand up. Oh, okay. Ooh, one, one of you, two, two of you over there. Oh, right. it's kind of, yeah, Nick Cage is excited. Uh, but uh, how many of you uh, would choose sex and death? Right, oh, to one, two, two people. There we are, three. But right, the rest of you fail to make a choice, you just get instantly struck by lightning. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, right, let's do that again. Who would rather not be racist, but everything that comes out of your mouth is misinterpreted as racist? <laughs> uh, who would rather not seem like a racist, but be twisted by race hate on the inside? Okay, who would go for the first one? Okay, you're not a racist, but everything seems racist. Put your hand up. Oh, right? No, no, yes, alright, okay, there we go. Over here, over here, it's going to be How many people are, are actually going to be racist but not seem racist? There we are. Right. Okay, I'm just trying to find out who secretly voted you, Kit, today. Uh, completely irrelevant to the rest of the show. Uh, but it is fun. But I had a third choice, not about the racism, you despicable fucking honkies, but um, <laughs> can anyone guess what my third choice offered to me by the heart failure nurse was? Uh, you've probably got an email about it waiting for you at home in your spam filter, uh, and uh, I've got a poem about it waiting in my mouth, which some of my friends would argue is itself a broken spam filter. I admit, I'm on Viagra. Was extinct, but now 
there's magma. And that's books. Abracadabra, a new statue in my piazza. Once more, I make girls gasp like asthma. I felt like I had pellagra. No, I assume deficiency. Was trapped in a tale by Kafka. But life's back more like Frank Capra, like Anthony with Cleopatra. I've got back the tale that wags ya. So, if you like me and I like you, then uh, please warn me, but with one hour's notice, because if I drop one, then we don't screw, it'll just warm my fingers and toe tips. So, now I've got the space time and the inclination. Come back to my TARDIS and join my Terry Nation. Help me get out <laughs> of oh, these ill fitting jeans. I'm finally going to break free of the uh, Help me get out of these ill fitting jeans, because in space, no one can hear you scream. With pleasure, make sure you bring a tape measure. Though I now exude less pheromones, I can still give you better moans. Though my big heart gives resistance, I've got chemical assistance. If any of your partners feel that's vital, just give them a pill whose generic medical title is Sildenafil. Girl, you got me over a barrel! Like a trip down Niagara, my heart makes me Michael Winner up, but these pills make me Mick Jagger. -er. So whether you are virginal or gloriously slaggy, -er, shaven or more hairy, you'll still find that I am shaggier. -er. I'll get out my sonic screwdriver, you get out your camera, I'll be the Paul Atreides to your Princess Padisha. I do, I do gym references as well. <laughs> you're my Romana, I'm Randy, I'm the man, you're my candy, I'm Lovejoy, I'm Maganum, I'm Taxin Shinna, watch her up. <laughs> when I'm on, I climb on, I'm prime on, I rhyme on, when I'm on, great times on, when I'm on, when I'm on, when I'm on, Viagra. I've learned so far that this, this, just any of this show doesn't work when I can't see the audience at all. I, was, I thought I was flirting with a lady there, but I was actually just coming on to frog in a homoerotic way. Uh, yeah, so Viagra, the chemical equivalent of a shoehorn, and boy, it works. Such erections, so hit, much orgasm, wow. On Viagra, your sonic screwdriver does open doors. Uh, yes, back to the tenuous metaphor. Uh, I now have a very long scarf, and I regenerate very quickly. Uh, the weird thing is that Viagra was actually first developed as a heart drug to improve circulation to all the body's extremities, <coughs> and it still does that. There's been a couple of times that I've misread a girl's signals, uh, taken it, and then one hour later just found myself with a hot face. Because <laughs> it's uh, physiological rather than a psychoactive drug. You can't just take it when you go out and want to feel in the mood. You'd be like a man with a pointed stick divining for water in the London Wetland Centre. <laughs> Someone with a conspicuously ticking Geiger counter, or given the shape of it, a HR Geiger counter perhaps. So once, once again, I changed, I changed film metaphor there via the vector of John Hurt. Uh, there are three reasons that my sitcom got cancelled. Number one, it failed the Bechtel test. Uh, number two, it apparently failed the Turing test. Number three, too many obscure intellectual references. <laughs> Now, Viagra does not put you in the mood to chase women in the first place. That's quite good in a way because it means that sexual attractiveness has no power over you anymore. Women can't persuade you to do stuff just because they're attractive. Uh, now, I only want to sleep with a girl if I actually like them. Uh, I have to make the conscious decision not only that I would like to like to sleep with a girl, but that I would like to like to sleep with that girl in approximately one hour. <laughs> So I can then still go out with a woman I like and find attractive, then use Viagra to show her a good time. So what's the problem? I am still pretty good at sex with a wide variety of women. Uh, that sounds like an uns unsubstantiated CV point, doesn't it? Uh, well, uh, I've also developed the broken minor blood vessels of an alcoholic in my face, 
and I can't work out if that is due to the heart failure, uh, to Viagra misuse, or just to being an alcoholic. So it's taken me a while to own up to using Viagra, and not just because I've been waiting to think up some decent material about it, uh, which by the evidence of tonight, I still haven't done. <laughs> but that's stupid not coming clean, because I've been upfront about all the drugs that I have to take to breathe properly, uh, to walk properly, or simply not to die. I am a meat puppet held up by pharmaceutical strings. Why should the string attached to Little Richard be any different? And my companions will probably all understand. I mean, they're all very understanding. I don't know, another straw poll. How, how many people in the audience have I actually slept with? So, uh, it's usually a lot higher. Uh, uh, so, uh, yes, um, how many in the audience would like to sleep with me? Uh, again, it's, it's, it's much higher, usually. Some of the back, put their hands up there. Okay, uh, now put your hands down if you're not just playing a practical joke on me and want me to get a hot face. <laughs> As a, you know, it's time for me to come out about my chemically aided sexuality, or lack of it. I'm not LGBT, although that is my favourite sandwich, uh, or LGBTQ, uh, I, mean, I guess I'm LGBTQI, or, or QA for asexual. Uh, now, whatever you are, you're, you're supposed to be out and proud, but... Uh, how can it be proud when the whole problem is that it's not out, or in, or out, or in, out, in, out. Sorry, that last bit was a bit hokey. <laughs> Since it's blunt to ask, mind if I just perform oral, I say, as a lover, I'm more sensual. Since saying, I'm chemically castrated, makes you sound like a pedo, I say, I'm heterosexual. So like the doctor, I still uh, seek out attractive and intelligent female company, though my standard of female beauty is quite eccentric because I like girls that are short, thin, with a round head and a long nose, basically girls that look like Pinocchio. Uh, but I think it's made me a better feminist, uh, so I've lost interest completely in porn, and uh, because most advertising still relies on sticking an attractive woman on the poster, uh, that's the mistake we made tonight, uh, <laughs> advertising now no longer works on me. It's just another way that uh, attractive women can no longer persuade me to do things that I don't want to do. And when I do play Pink Conkers, I've switched, um, I, I suspect permanently, uh, from a top to a bottom. That's right. In roleplay terms, it's reversed my polarity. So now I can chat with girls thinking, without thinking, I'd like to sleep with you. I'll agree to anything. Um, I'm assessing their suitability on realistic terms. Uh, whether they're clever, uh, whether they'll appeal to an overseas audience, whether they're going to leave if they get a better offer or stay for at least three seasons. So I am still searching for a companion, ladies and gentlemen. The one we won't be disappointed to find that my distended heart is much bigger on the inside uh, than on the outside. And that, if she wants me to be her raggedy man, well, she won't be waiting for all of space and time, but she will have to wait about an hour. But not Karen Gillan, though, because if two gingers have sex, then the universe is instantly destroyed. <laughs> Uh, if you want to find out the prequel to the sequel, my book is normally a tenner, but it's five quid because we had bed bugs. We had to superheat the room and they all got stuck together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Tyrone Jones, round of applause, please. Uh, we're going to have a quick uh, few minute break where to give you an opportunity to buy Richard's book if you would like to do so uh, and top up your drinks at the bar. And then we're going to be back with a fantastic music hall act. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Woo!